there's the amazing thing about the wind in the Wizard of Oz, which is at the beginning of the Wizard of Oz, where the cast are kind of going, Oh, yeah, yeah. To create a wind effect. And actually, in loads of Lynch films, you get that wind effect. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Film Ariat on YouTube, joined by Sean Vickers for another Boys on Film review video. We are covering the BFI London Film Festival. Oh, my God. I was so excited about this documentary that we're talking about today. It's called Lynch Oz. We're both David Lynch fans. So going into this, I mean, high expectations, pretty much, right? Quite huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily about him as a filmmaker and all of his films. It's about the connection between what what he's inspired by, which is The Wizard of Oz, big 19, uh, 1939 musical, uh, which, of course just paved the way for so many films since the late 30s i mean so iconic in so many ways that film yeah and you realize that it touches not just david lynch but many many filmmakers i mean it's the victor fleming film for 39 like you said he's got this enduring obsession with it this documentary that we watched was quite amazing really because it took it was in six chapters and it took six filmmakers and told you their view of the wizard of oz and their own filmmaking and david lynch yeah some chapters better than others. John Waters is taking over one of those chapters, and I found his chapter to be the most, well, the funniest and the most entertaining. So it's Alexandra O'Philippe. Are you familiar with his previous documentaries? I know he did one about The Exorcist. I know you're not likely you to see that. This to me and we saw each I haven't, actually. I mean, I wouldn't watch a documentary on The Exorcist anyway. No. Like, well, I think you'd appreciate <laughs> it, though. From, a, from an outside, I say an outsider's point of view, someone who's not necessarily into horror, there are loads of elements that I think you would be fascinated by. Really? It's okay. not just That's about good. horror, horror yeah. as such. It's about the, the whole process. We had a little chat, chat afterwards about Mulholland Drive, which we've talked about on this show. And I just find it all quite amazing, really, because as a Lynch fan, all the way through all you know a range of movies the way it was framed and the and the research that I've gone into describing the references I thought were really really insightful you know there's so much that happens in the Wizard of Oz and there's so much um so many effects that are used in the Wizard of Oz and films from that period that David Lynch leans into and, and borrows from um that are represented in a way uh, in his films in the 90s, etc., to uh, his body of work, that when you see it, you can't, again, you can't unsee it. You're like, oh my God, that's a direct reference. And you know, I think at one point in the documentary, he says that a day doesn't go by, go by where I don't think about The Wizard of Oz. Like, and it's amazing, because in some ways it gives you, it frames some of his movies in a way that, you know, his movies are about mood and character and feeling. And he uses some of these devices, which, now when I watch it, I mean, what I want to, I said to you, I want to watch Mulholland Drive again for the 10 squillionth time. Yeah. But it just also added another layer of complexity and it also opened up some of those films to reinterpretation. So I, I really enjoyed those components, really. I thought they were really eye-opening. You're absolutely right as well, because I think once you've seen a David Lynch film or you know that style, and I mean, it's so memorable for so many reasons, but I mean, you've got the red curtains, obviously a throwback to, to The Wizard of Oz as well, and you've got the, the overlapping of, of images. So you've got two, two scenes overlapping each other, which isn't a technique that's used by a lot of filmmakers now, but obviously back in the late 30s and 40s it was, and it's something that David Lynch has used in, in his films. And it's, again, it's it's a trademark style, isn't it? That you kind of think, oh, that's a David Lynch-ism. It's fascinating. When I tell people that The Wizard of Oz is one of my favourite films, they're like, wow, that's such a contrast to some of your other big films like Halloween or, you know, a lot of the horror films. But actually there are a lot of dark elements in The Wizard of Oz that people kind of don't really think about that much, like the flying monkeys. The Wizard of Oz plays with that brilliant thing around reality and the dreamscape, you know. The majority of The Wizard of Oz is Dorothy's dream, you know, and the characters in Dorothy's dream are characters in real life. Now, you look at many of his films where, I mean, I'm going to go back to Mulholland Drive, Mulholland Drive and the way that the same characters are in the dreamscape, or in Diane's dreamscape, and in the reality... Is, is, a, is a direct lift, that idea that, you know, something else is happening. I just thought that was, that was super exciting. And to, as you said, the overlay stuff, it happens a lot in Inland Empire. You don't, he's one of those people that has, still uses that effect of two things happening. There's the amazing thing about the wind in The Wizard of Oz, which is at the beginning of The Wizard of Oz, where the cast are kind of going, Oh, yeah, yeah. 
to create a wind effect. And actually, loads of Lynch films, you get that wind effect. He lifts that wind effect. So I, for me, I was nerding out a bit because I was a bit like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I'm not sure, well, I guess, I'm not sure if you were uh, just, uh, if you weren't a Lynch fan or you were like, like I don't know whether you embrace this documentary as much, but for me, I found it such a rich seam of, of knowledge and, and intellect around that movie and around how it's impacted him and other directors. That's funny you mentioned about The Wind as well, because I was thinking about The Exorcist earlier. I posted on our Instagram about The Exorcist being still, 50 years on, one of the most memorable horror films that people always think about when they think about their favourite, you know, they're writing a list of favourite horror films. And that starts off with the sound of buzzing bees, because a lot of people have this fear of bees, and it's almost like a, a great way of starting a film that sets the tension really high. And I suppose that's similar to The Wizard of Oz, you know, if you've got that that wind sound, it all, it, it sets sets that theme, doesn't it, that something bad is about to happen. Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, the Red Shoes feature a lot in his films. Yeah. And the direct reference in one of his movies, I, can't, I think it's Laura Dern clicking her heels together and nothing happening, you know, that's a direct reference. There's a lot of talk around Dorothy in a lot of the films and this not being The Wizard of Oz. It's kind of in plain sight, which I kind of loved. You know, like the glowing globe of Galinda. Um, you just that a lot as the kind of like orbs that comes through. I don't know about you, but I I love the fact that this documentary I could see on the big screen as well because a lot of David Lynch films I've seen on the small screen and not necessarily in the cinema. So it was nice to see really big versions of films that I'm used to seeing really tiny because. Yeah they just look so amazing on the big screen and that was another interesting interesting aspect about this documentary was that it you know it can be seen on the big screen i would recommend going to see it in the cinema Truly. as well but I, I suppose you could see it at home as well but if you're not used to seeing david lynch stuff yeah on the big screen. yeah yeah i mean i could talk about the references to the cows come home because it just really stayed with me i mean the whole idea my final one is you know in the wizard of oz where they pull back the curtain and the the wizard is actually that guy speaking into a microphone. Yeah, Toto's and you pulling have up that again. So many of his films, even in Twin Peaks, where you go behind the red curtain, and there's this character who's controlling everything. Like, I just found I I found it uh, really great. My one criticism would be, and this will affect my star rating. I felt there was between the six talking heads overlap. Yeah. So actually, I think it could, and it's and it's a petty criticism. I'll take it. It could have been slightly more condensed because you do have a lot of overlap of ideas. But notwithstanding that, uh, I thought it was great. Yeah, I was going to say that, and that there was maybe a little bit of inconsistency with the chapters. But I guess you've got to have a a structure for a documentary, and you could have done it other ways, which would have been more predictable and a bit more obvious, where you you know you could talk about a theme, but it was different people talking about their view on the connections. So I, th I thought that was quite original, but maybe inconsistent for that reason. So I, I guess you can't you can't win everything, you can't win it all, and it must be really difficult making a, doc a documentary. And it, and it is like a this. little long for a documentary. Yeah. You're gonna do your. <laughs> you're gonna do your usual snipping. Fifteen minutes. It's a little long. It wouldn't be a review if I didn't say you could take twenty minutes out of it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I did really enjoy it. You're hopefully not going to say that about the twenty-minute shorts, though, are you? That are coming up. No, because that would be. Ridiculous. Unless they're really awful, of course. <laughs> yeah, could have done with like zero minutes Just running time. Not making it. No, uh, there's no not make it <laughs> moment <laughs> in my short so far. Uh, so final verdict then for Lynch Charles. I found it fascinating. As a Lynch fan, I went into it with a, you know, a really keen interest in the subject. And it, yeah, opened my mind. It, it you know, I saw things that I didn't know about and I found the talking heads fascinating if you know radically different which i suppose makes the documentary more interesting so yeah it's a four star for me i, I really enjoyed it same for me four stars <laughs> and thank you david lynch for all the work that you've created david, i might just go and watch another one of your films right now yeah that's the thing isn't it because i'm sure people will be doing that so it's very clever in that respect I mean, it's interesting because you said Eraserhead's your favourite David Lynch film. It is, yeah. And Blue Velvet. 
Yeah, mm. probably joint actually, joint favourites. I am Mulholland Drive, but actually it made me think when I watched that documentary that I need to watch Wild at Heart again. Do you know I've never seen that? Which is ludicrous. Being a, being a David Lynch fan, never seen it. It's crazy. Yeah, but I'll be watching it now, today. <laughs> right. <laughs> thank you, Sean. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Plenty more LFF coverage, reviews coming up, and hopefully some interviews. We've got some red carpets coming up, too. Did somebody say red carpet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll it out. <laughs> She's here. <laughs>